let's take a look at a theorem about cyclic groups. So suppose we've got two finite cyclic groups, and we're going to take the direct product of them. Sometimes that's going to be cyclic, and sometimes it won't be. It all depends on the orders of those two groups. If the orders of the two groups are relatively prime, then the direct product will be cyclic. If they're not, then it won't be cyclic. So, for example, if I have something like Z12 plus Z25, that will be cyclic because 12 and 25 are relatively prime. On the other hand, if I had something like Z9, direct product with Z15, even though those are two cyclic groups, when I take the direct product, those things are not relatively prime, so it's not going to be cyclic. I'm not going to go through the proof of this theorem, but it really pretty much follows directly from the last theorem we looked at, where we looked at the order of the different elements when in a direct product. We can, in fact, even generalize this theorem to beyond two groups to any number of groups. In general, the direct product of a bunch of finite cyclic groups will be cyclic if and only if any pair of them, the orders are relatively prime. So, for example, Z4 plus Z27 plus Z5 plus Z49, in general, this thing would be really tough to analyze without something like this. However, each of those things is relatively prime to all the others, so that's going to have to be cyclic. On the other hand, if I started out the same way, Z4 plus Z27 plus Z5 plus Z35, that's not going to be cyclic because this is relatively prime to everything else, this is relatively prime to everything else, but Z5 and Z35 are not relatively prime. Common, greatest common divisor is 5. Because they share a factor, it's not cyclic.